As all you may remember, that there's fire protection involved in my major. So you'd assume that I've always had an acute sense of fire safety. Well, you'd be dead wrong, because I'm going to tell you a story where I could have been charged with arson. <laughs> it starts back in the fourth grade, not fourth grade, seventh grade. Uh, in the seventh grade, and I had an opportunity to hang out with some eighth graders. And you know, if you're in the seventh grade, about to hang out with older kids, you're one cool guy. So they invited me to go out and play with some fireworks. Nothing I've never done before, so I thought it was going to be pretty good. Uh, but what made this one especially special is the fact that we're going to go out with Jordan Fexico. And he was like the coolest eighth grader around. So I guess what I should do is tell you about the first time I met him, which is the same day that we started this terrible fire. Um, so he, he texted us and told us just to walk into his house whenever we wanted to come over. So we were like, all right, we talked amongst each other. It's me, my friend Jake, and Christian. And we're like, let's just go over there around three, right? So we walk in there. It's, it's incredibly dark for any kind of home in the middle of the day. Uh, his grandma's just passed out on the couch. So we just walk by her, go into uh, what we know is his room, and we hear the, you know, the very identifiable noise of pornographic material coming from inside the room. Um, so naturally, we walk in anyway, uh, and, and this guy, he's laying on his bed, he's laying on his bed, petting his dog, and that is not a sexual innuendo, he was literally petting his dog, uh, watching porn like it was The Price is Right. Uh, and you know, typically, you know, um, I would have been embarrassed if somebody walked on me watching pornographic material, but this guy showed no sympathy. So I was like, this guy is cool. This guy is slick as can be. Um, and so he's like, all right, let's go, guys. Like, it was nothing. And he walks out in the living room, and he goes up to his grandma. I was like, all right, so maybe he's a good guy. He's going to tell his grandma that we're leaving, you know? No, he reaches down into her purse, and he steals her cigarettes. He steals the cigarettes and a lighter, goes and buys some, well, it doesn't buy any, goes and grabs some cranberry juice, and we go off to do uh, uh, the fireworks. So I'm like, this guy's hardcore. He's stealing from his grandma. I didn't approve of it, but I was like, no wonder people think this guy's cool. Um, well, we get out there, and he starts lighting fireworks and doing stuff like this while we're just trying to walk the site that we're doing it. And he's throwing smoke bombs at everybody. And you would think smoke bombs not that bad, but they literally spit fire. So then, like, four fires start in the field, like, just all at once. And we're running over trying to put these suckers out, okay? Uh, stopping on them, but there's one that gets completely out of hand. It gets huge, and we're all freaking out. You know, we're thinking we're going to get in a lot of trouble. But then Jordan Mexico. This guy walks up to the fire, pulls out a cigarette, lights it, turns to us, and literally says, let's put this effort out. Now, I've heard a lot of inspirational quotes in my time, but never have I been more inspired to do something in my entire life than when Jordan Bexco told me to put this effort out. Um, and I'm not saying smoking is cool, but if there's ever a time to look while smoking, it's when there's a giant fire behind you. Um, so we're out there, we're just try trying to stomp it out, I'm panicking right now because it, it's, it gets pretty big. Eventually it gets about the size of a semi-truck, like the burn spot. But we're going out, my friend Jake's yelling that his hair's on fire. And I'm not even caring. I'm thinking, I'm like, this guy's an idiot. Every, all my friends are idiots. I regret every decision I've made today. Um, well, eventually we, we get a put out and we are just covered head to toe in ashes. Just completely covered. Um, you can't even see like our face anymore. It's just completely black. Uh, so then we try and sneak out. And then we see tons of people in our neighborhood just all walking around by where this field is. And then we're like, uh-oh, somebody called, pro probably called the, the fire department. So then we have to run back into the field, hop a couple fences, and we end up at my friend's Jake house where we look at our legs and we have like burn marks all over us. Uh, my friend's hair was actually on fire because he started combing it out and he had like an emo swoop and then it was like all the way up. Uh, so that was kind of a, a bad thing. Um, so I guess you would think I learned something from this, but ultimately I didn't. Uh, later, later, a couple months later, I caught a lake on fire. But I think what's important to know is that, you know, a series of decisions leads to a lesson. And that's where I, I leave my story. Thank you. Styrofoam turns into a sorry substance that just keeps burning despite being on water. So.